r slash ask reddit what's the most amazing thing about the universe it must be true that either it didn't exist then it did or two it has always existed what even is time the space in which space can change the space of space i am so mind ducked right now matter when subjected to enough energy and time becomes sentient and ponders its own existence like a really ducked up diamond Honestly, why even buy a diamond if it can't live an existential nightmare as you look on in ever-growing uneasiness, knowing even though you try to push the thoughts away that one day you too will fade from existence, and from memory, until there's no one left to remember you? That it created self-aware entities that think about it. Given enough time hydrogen gives itself a name. Given enough time hydrogen atoms will start to masturbate. Given enough time hydrogen atoms will draw big animate titties. How young it is. People look at the universe being 13.7 billion years old and say that is ancient. That is nothing. Stars will continue to form for another 100 trillion years. Even after that. Stellar remnants will exist for quadrillions of years. Black holes will still produce energy that can be used by intelligent civilizations for 10,100 years. Keep in mind if biological life doesn't destroy itself, we will just keep getting more and more knowledge. It's probably a safe bet that within 500 years which is nothing on universal time scales, we will be an interstellar species that has long ago transcended biology. There is no telling what our descendants will do for the remaining life of the universe. The 4-5 billion years of biological evolution of life on earth will be looked at as an embryonic stage for endless quintillions of years of real life to begin post-biology. They will view the universe as their oyster, a place of infinite possibilities while we are still just spending our days trying not to die and trying to avoid being punished by our brains with pain. Two possibilities exist, either we are alone in the universe or we are not. Both are equally terrifying. Arthur C. Clarke. What if the universe is self similar to the extent that other identical earths exist, then we'd be alone with ourselves. Arthur C. Clarke is also responsible for such gems as, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. It may be that our role on this planet is not to worship God, but to create him, and, I'm sure the universe is full of intelligent life. It's just been too intelligent to come here. Arthur C. Clarke is a brilliant man and a prodigy of an author, and his books are right up the alley of anyone who clicked on this thread out of a curious love for the universe. I highly recommend any and all of his books and short stories. That we just don't understand it. It could be flat. It could be irregular. There could be another one. It's growing at an exponential speed. It's invisible contents. We try to learn more about it using our earthly knowledge but there is certainly more to it. It's like trying to wrap your head around eternity. This exactly. We don't know what is out there and can only really guess through theories from our already obtained knowledge. Which, as of today, is most likely just a drop in the ocean compared to the universe in its entirety. Because of this the potential is endless. And that idea is very exciting and terrifying. We could all be dead tomorrow by some shit we didn't know was coming. Look again at that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it everyone you love. Everyone you know. Everyone you ever heard of. Every human being who ever was. Lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering. Thousands of confident religions. Ideologies. And economic doctrines. Every hunter and forager. Every hero and coward. Every creator and destroyer of civilization. Every king and peasant. Every young couple in love. Every mother and father. Hopeful child. Inventor and explorer. Every teacher of morals. Every corrupt politician. Every superstar. Every supreme leader. Every sin and sinner in the history of our species lived there. On a moat of dust suspended in a sunbeam. Semicolon Carl Sagan. That somehow all the particles accumulated in a specific way and in specific quantities to give you conscious thought. There are 10 million 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 particles in the universe that we can observe. Your mama took the ugly ones and put them into one nerd. Flashback to 2012. If you nut in space you move backwards. Do you have videographic evidence of this? Spacehub.com Hydrogen plus time equals people and planets. 
Hydrogen, given enough time, will send unsolicited dong pics. In order to bake apple pie you must first create the universe. To be pedantic, if you want to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first create the universe. Semicolon Carl Sagan. There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what a universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something even more bizarre and inexplicable. There is another theory which states that this has already happened. Douglas Adams. In the beginning the universe was created. This had made many people very angry and has been widely regarded as a bad move. Imagine being transported to a parallel universe that was almost identical to our own. Somewhere out in the vastness of that universe, there is a tiny planet. This much is true in both universes. On this planet, there is a beach. And on that beach, there is a small stone. Once again, both universes are alike in this regard. Beneath that stone, however, there are several million grains of sand. And while they are all are in precisely the same location in each universe, one of them a tiny speck of particularly clear quartz, hewn from a larger hole millions of years before, has a single atom that is positioned a fraction of a femtometer differently than its twin in the mirror dimension. You may think that such an insignificant difference would label these two universes as being functionally identical, and you would be right. In fact, they are so similar that the multiverse has long since combined them into one reality. That single atom and that tiny speck of sand on that lonesome beach on a distant planet merely occupies two spaces at once, seeming to an outside observer to vibrate back and forth at a predictable rate. That every atom in existence seems to do the same is probably a coincidence. Too long didn't read, everything is buzzing. The multiverse interpretation of quantum mechanics is an intriguing idea. There's a related thought experiment called quantum suicide. Basically, you try killing yourself with a gun that only fires when a spin half particle, with two possible states, is measured to have spin in a certain direction when the trigger is pulled. In quantum mechanics, before the spin is measured, it exists as a superposition of both spin up and spin down. Simultaneously, if the particle is measured to have spin down, it doesn't fire, if it is spin up, it fires. But the idea is that to you, and you alone, as the observer, it will always seem as if the gun doesn't fire. According to the multiverse interpretation the particle actually collapses into both states upon measurement but in two different universes. And usually we only see one because we as observers are randomly shunted into one of the possible universes along with the collapse of the particle's state. However, in this case, in one of the universes you would be dead due to the trigger setting off. So you should only experience the second possibility, that is, staying alive, because that is the only one in which you are still conscious. No matter how many times you pull the trigger, the idea goes, the gun never fires and you should always survive. From your own perspective, an outside observer, watching you carry out the quantum suicide, would not always see you survive though, since he would remain alive and conscious in both possible timelines and to him you have a 50 stroke 50 chance of dying, as expected. Be right back shooting myself to test the theory. It's indifferent to everything. Yes, it's incredible to think that for all of our morals, our ideas of good karma and bad karma, what goes around comes around etc. These ideas that feel so ingrained to the world we live in are all mere thoughts in our head, and that the world, the universe, is not just, and seems nothing as good or bad, guilty or innocent, but simply as is, something I simply cannot comprehend with words. I don't care, the universe. That whatever our problems are, big or small, it won't matter in 1 million years worst being a nuclear war or something. I got 99 problems and the universe doesn't give a duck about any of them. That it exists. And it came from somewhere, or nowhere. I really hate thinking about this kind of stuff. It kinda feels like if I think too hard about why matter exists or where it came from and other similar questions, that everything might suddenly come undone or cease to exist. I'd say that's fair, if my sims started glaring at me with raised eyebrows instead of going about their busy lives, I'd turn off the computer too. It gave us magnets, how do those work? Magnets are ducking magic, aligning particles with each other makes them fly towards themselves? Miss me with that hobknocking physics bollocks. 
Today I learned the phrase hobknocking bollocks. Whales are the biggest known creatures in the known universe. They're the biggest animal but the biggest organism is an aspen tree colony that has expanded over miles, and the second largest animal is yo mama. One of my favorite is about the number of unique orders for cards in a standard 52 card deck. I've seen a really good explanation of how big 52 actually is. Set a timer to count down 52 seconds. That's 8.0658x1067 seconds. Stand on the equator and take a step forward every billion years. When you've circled the earth once, take a drop of water from the Pacific Ocean and keep going. When the Pacific Ocean is empty, lay a sheet of paper down, refill the ocean and carry on. When your stack of paper reaches the sun, take a look at the timer. The three leftmost digits won't have changed. 8.063x1067 seconds left to go. You have to repeat the whole process 1000 times to get one stroke three of the way through that time. 5.385x1067 seconds left to go. So to kill that time you try something else. Shuffle a deck of cards. Deal yourself 5 cards every billion years. Each time you get a royal flush. Buy a lottery ticket. Each time that ticket wins the jackpot. Throw a grain of sand in the Grand Canyon. When the Grand Canyon's full. Take one ounce of rock off Mount Everest. Empty the canyon and carry on. When Everest has been leveled. Check the timer. There's barely any change. 5.364x1067 seconds left. You'd have to repeat this process 256 times to have run out the timer. If I'm not mistaken, I read that every time you shuffle a deck of cards. Chances are nobody ever shuffled it in that order. Probably no two random shuffles by anyone were ever the same. This is one I thought about recently. I believe that Carl Sagan said that we, sentient entities, are a way for the cosmos to know itself. With this in mind, when we think about the end of our universe, whether it be through a big shrink, big cooling, or what have you, we get apprehensive. We probably will never see this end. Many of us will be dead, yet, we still get a cold fear in our hearts. We are also a way for the cosmos to fear its demise. Inanimate non-living objects eventually form to make sentient, living beings that question their own existence and want to find facts about the process between the beginning of the universe to now and even want to anticipate the future. All from some hydrogen shits floating around and doing stuff. Kinda similar, everything we have on this earth comes from this earth. This means that it was always possible to have electricity, planes, internet, Wi-Fi, mobile phones etc even in the stone ages. Humans just hadn't invented it yet. Just takes a while to figure stuff out. The only way we can see the universe is from inside it. We will likely never possess any way of viewing our universe from outside its physicality. We send a drone out. That every single random event since the dawn of creation. The birth and death of stars, planets and galaxies. The very genesis of life has led to you being here right now to ask this question. And I, making this useless comment. Thanks universe. Plenty of things. The way we perceive the universe, in its physical form. We think it's all around us, on a cosmic scale. But more than that it's inside all of us. We're made of each and every atom that the universe is comprised of. It sounds super philosophical and like something a stoned person would say. But the distinctiveness within our universe is what sets everyone apart. The way each of us, made up of the same elements of this universe, yet managed to be so different. Perhaps you could say the greatest and rather miraculous thing of all is in fact, life. Imagine, for the moment, that the universe began in a truly colossal flash of light. For the first several eons, there was little more than dust, slowly being drawn together by a combination of gravity and electromagnetism. Then, as stars formed and gave birth to planets, and as complex molecules came together, the beginnings of life emerged. At first, this life was incredibly simple, barely capable of surviving to reproduce, let alone contemplating its own existence. As the ages passed, though, it gave rise to more and more complexity, eventually resulting in beings who could look up at the stars that had birthed them and wonder why these creatures, driven by something they could scarcely comprehend, 
set about trying to define their place in world and explain how they came to inhabit it, they began to believe, like the organisms that had spawned them. These beliefs and suppositions grew and evolved. They incited terrible tragedies and sparked incredible developments, until the day that they finally fell away and were replaced by an ever increasing awareness of the cosmos. However, the original drive, the desire to know and understand, remained, and it prompted the thinking creatures to combine their efforts in pursuit of an answer. The inquisitive explorers reached toward the stars once more, and when they did, they encountered other beings, not terribly unlike themselves. There were rough patches in these meetings, of course, but as each species learned to understand and cherish one another, they all compounded their perspectives in pursuit of their goal. A single, interlinked mind rose from the trillions of individual beings. Just as their individuals' brains had risen from tiny connected cells, it took millennia, but the entity, having come to include every creature in the universe, finally found the answer that it sought, and yet, it was not wholly content. Through its expansive consciousness and unfathomable technology, it was able to know everything that ever was, wasn't, or would be. It could control the whole of existence with little more than a passing thought, and as it contemplated, it realized what it actually wanted. Space began to shrink in upon itself. Stars and planets were swept up in an invisible wake, being pulled inward at impossible speeds and across countless light years. It took eons more. But finally, all of the possibilities and all of the many celestial bodies were brought together in a single point, both infinitely dense and incalculably massive, yet persisting at a size seemingly too small to exist. Tiny adjustments were made in minute, but important, rules were put into place, but ultimately, the end result of the entity's influences would remain unknown. Then, there was a colossal flash of light, planets formed, life arose, Creatures scurried through the world, battles were fought, love was found, and an entire history was written across an infinite number of unique minds. Some of those minds delighted in sharing their stories, while others wanted nothing more than to hear them. Remember to listen. Too long didn't read. We are the universe entertaining itself. The fact that people have been around for thousands of years and I just happen to exist at the same time as 6 9 a single human brain has as many neurons as there are stars in the Milky Way galaxy, around 100 billion. Source, a neuroscientist filled with useless facts about the brain. No matter how insignificant and bleak life may look up close, when climbing a mountain and admiring the view, or finding a spot away from the city and looking at the stars, we will forever be hit by its beauty. The big picture is always there to be admired, to make us forget how small and pointless daily details are. Whoa, you made it to the end, you're a ducking beast, I'll cut you a deal, smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh, it's free and that's a great price.